Let's take a look at some examples for section 2.4, but using the TI-84 calculator. So factorials, beginning there. The calculator can do factorials for you. Um, and obviously, you could literally type in, for this first example, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, and so forth, until you get down to 1. But um, it has a built-in feature for factorials. So if you type in the number first, so put the 7 down, and then go to the Math button, and over here to Prob. All right, so come over to Prob, and the fourth item down should be an exclamation point, which is factorials. So if you put that exclamation point after the number, the calculator knows what to do. It will take 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 and so forth, uh, and then multiply that all together and give you 5,040. All right, and you can do operations with those. So for instance, in this next case, uh, if I am doing 7 factorial, let's go over to the uh, math uh, button and then over to the prob menu then get that factorial and then you can just say divide by and then 5 and then go get the factorial key again. Okay, And it will perform that correctly for you. Now it gets an answer of 42. Um, I kind of showed a shortcut of how you could do something like this in the video which wouldn't really need a calculator but you can always use the calculator for this type of operation. That's perfectly fine. All right, now there's not a lot of algebra available when it comes to factorials. Um, in the next example, 10 factorial over 7 minus 2 factorial, uh, you could in fact do 7 minus 2 first and do 10 factorial over 5 factorial. That would be fine. Just don't do like 7 factorial minus 2 factorial, that's going to be something completely different. Um, so the factorial doesn't distribute into parentheses like that. Now, you can do this by hand, like you could do 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial, and you can stop this at any point you want because it's a recursive process, and you could stop it at the 5 factorial because you already have a 5 factorial in the denominator, and then you just need to find 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. And you can do that on the calculator, um, or you can use the built-in features for uh, factorial. Either way is perfectly fine. Uh, if you ever are using factorial in this class, you're generally only using it for um, just getting the factorial of a number. Now, you could even still do 7 minus 2 in parentheses and then the factorial after this, so there's no need to actually get the value of 7 minus 2 first and then do the factorial. Regardless, you're going to get the same answer, so 30,240. Okay, let's take a look at some permutation and combination examples. So we showed some formulas for permutations and combinations in the class, but you don't necessarily need to use those um, unless you particularly want to. Um, the calculator has built-in features for these as well. And they're in the same place. So if you hit the math key and go over to the prob menu, you'll see NPR and NCR as the second and third item. So that's the uh, permutation and combination functions, respectively. All right, let's look at this next example. A minor league baseball team has a board of directors that consists of 15 members. Each year, they must re-elect a president, vice president, and secretary. How many different slates of candidates are possible? Okay. So first, you need to decide if you're choosing a single item out of multiple groups or if you have multiple items chosen out of a single group, okay? Because in this case, we have this board of directors, which has 15 members. 
Uh, that's a single group of items that we're picking from. And from that single group, we are picking multiple items. So we're picking multiple items from a single group. Now, anytime we're picking multiple items out of a single group, we're either using a permutation or a combination. So we just have to decide from context which one is the case. Now, technically, in a permutation, order is important, and in a combination, order is not important. But one thing that is always a giveaway, like here, we're choosing a president, vice president, and secretary. So we're making a distinction among the chosen objects. And anytime we make a distinction among the chosen objects, that's a permutation. So this is a permutation of 15 items taken three at a time. And we could plug that into the permutations formula, or we can just use the calculator to help us out here. The way we do it is we put the 15 on the home screen first, and then go to the prob submenu, choose the NPR function, and it puts the P kind of uh, nestled next to the 15 to make it look like as you're writing it. And then it waits for you to put the uh, value of R after that. So once we do that, that gives us 2,730. Okay, and you'd get the same answer from using the formula. All right, after a major flood affects a small town, the county fire department must decide which members to send in to assist with rescue efforts. If there are 26 firefighters at the department and they need to choose eight to assist, how many different groups of eight could be chosen? All right, so first you'll know that you're doing a question involving counting rather than probability because it will always say how many different ways, how many different groups, like how many different something or another, okay? So that means you'd be using either the fundamental counting principle or permutations combinations. All right, so in this case, we have one group of items. So we have the 26 firefighters. And out of that group, we're picking eight to assist with the rescue efforts. So we're picking multiple items from a single group. So that's either a permutation or a combination. Now, this is going to be a combination because of the eight that we're choosing, we're not making a distinction among those chosen. So they're just each on the team, not necessarily going to uh, be like a leader or you know of any sorts. There's no distinction made among the chosen. So 26 choose eight with a combination that when I plug into the calculator, so 26 first, and then I go over to the math submenu, over here to prob, down to NCR this time for combinations, and eight. So it results in a large number. Uh, it looks like 1,562,275. So 1,562,275. And that's okay. These numbers can get large when we're counting these kinds of groups. But um, if you're ever uncertain that that's the right answer, you could always just try out the formula and see if that gives you the same result. And it, it should if you've used the formula properly, because that's where it's getting the answer from. All right. Elijah has six concert passer, pa <laughs> posters from her favorite bands that she has seen. If she wants to hang these in her room, how many ways can she arrange them? All right, so she's going to put all six on the walls somewhere. But when she puts the first one up, it's there, and she can't pick it again, obviously. So um, there's kind of this descending order of uh, ones that are chosen. We could think of this as a fundamental counting principle problem. We could think of this as a permutation because we have a group of six objects and we're taking all of them. Um, but one thing that I mentioned in the lecture portion is that whenever you do a permutation of six objects taken six at a time or 
really any time that n and r are equal to each other, that just results in a factorial. So you could simplify this because she's picking all of them as a factorial. So 6 factorial, let's see what we come up with. Okay, that gives me 720. All right, you could also have done something like this. So she'll pick the first one. She has six choices to choose from. She hangs it, and then there's only five choices to choose from. Hangs that one, then there's four, three, two, and one. And that's where this factorial comes from. So lots of different ways you could solve that particular problem. For his advanced literature class, Jeremy is required to report on five different books. If the instructor has provided a list of 13 books to choose from, how many ways can he choose the five books? All right, so we have a group of 13 books to pick from. So that's one group of items. And we're picking multiple items out of that group. So that tells me this is either a permutation or a combination. And in this case, order doesn't matter because he's not making a distinction among the chosen books. He's just picking five that he's going to report on. So a combination of 13 items taken five at a time. Let's see what we come up with when we use the formula from the calculator. All right, so 1,287. Okay, and a couple things to keep in mind. If you accidentally reverse the order of these numbers, like if you put the five down first, and then you put the combinations or the permutations, uh, and then you put n. You end up with zero. And that's kind of the way the calculator indicates an error here, because the value of n has to be uh, at least, it has to be bigger than r, but it also could be equal. That's fine. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, if, if you have n and r equal in a permutation, you get a factorial. If n and r happen to be equal in a combination, you get 1. And that's kind of another way of thinking about these problems where, like uh, the previous one, where we had uh, a student wanting to hang six posters. There's clearly more than one way to hang six posters, so there's no way that that's a combination. So lots of ways to logically think about these. All right, what is the probability of winning the jackpot and the pick four lottery? In this system, you cho choose four numbers between 0 and 15 and try to match the selected winning number in the exact order they are chosen. Duplicate values are permitted. Okay, so this is a common... Well, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're combining the ideas of probability and uh, counting techniques, right? Because we need to count all the different ways that this can happen before we can do this probability. Uh, one thing that's helpful is this little clue that duplicate values are permitted. So like a winning number could be like 4407, for instance. So you could use the 4 twice. And that actually helps us because it rules out the possibilities of combinations and permutations because there you can't have duplicates. So um, we have to start with a fundamental counting principle. So we have these four numbers that we have to choose. And there's 16 numbers to pick from for the first. All right, if I'm going between 0 and 15, that's a total of 16 numbers. And duplicates are permitted, so there's still 16 possibilities for the second. For the third and the fourth. All right, so that's 16 to the fourth power. So there's 65,536 uh, different, different winning sets here. But only one is the winning combination, so 
one out of that many gives you the probability. And you can answer with a decimal or you could just leave it as a fraction and it's probably a bit easier to express as a fraction because that decimal is going to be pretty small. All right, what is the probability of guessing the correct passcode for an iPhone on the first try if the code consists of six digits? So you have these six digits to create your passcode. And each digit could be the values 0 through 10. So 0 through, sorry, 0 through 9 gives you 10 possibilities. That's what I was thinking. So you have 10 possibilities for the first digit, the second, the third, and so forth, because repetition is allowed. Like you could technically pick the value 7777777. That's fine. It would allow it. All right, so there's 10 possibilities on each one. That's 10 to the sixth, which is 1 million. So there's 1 million passcodes, passcodes possible, only one of which is correct. So that probability would be 1 out of 1 million. 